Hello friends, let's rapid revise the time complexity of quicksort algorithm. Okay, so uh, we already learned the algorithm in the previous lectures. Now we'll uh, calculate the time complexity of each of the each statement and in the end of the quicksort algorithm. Okay, first of all, the quicksort algorithm APQ. Okay, is called and a, uh, uh, we know that the this was the terminating condition and it will execute only once. Okay, so it the order will be one. Now else part, we, if we go to else part, uh, first uh, statement uh, calls the partition algorithm. So the partition algorithm, whatever be the complexity, becomes this the complexity of this statement. Now, uh, if we consider uh, a small array of elements like. 12, 4, 81, and this uh, we know that the J will traverse from I plus 1 sorry P plus 1 to Q plus 1 ok so P plus 1 to Q plus 1 uh, normally it will say that the total number of elements will be n minus 1 so n minus 1 times this statement will be executed if the if statement is true and this will also will be executed n minus 1 times so overall we can say that it becomes the order of n times. Okay, this statement will also execute only one time. So constant time complexity same here. So we get the overall time complexity of the partition algorithm be n order of n times. Will be it or the best case, worst case, or the average case. Okay, so we get here the time complexity as order of n. And for this equation, uh, for this statement we get that uh, the number of elements here will be i minus 1 minus p minus 1 ok so we get what i minus p i minus 1 minus of p plus 1 sorry p plus 1 so we will get as i minus p so we will get the order of p n minus p of i minus p Okay, similarly we we'll get here as p of q minus i okay and it will execute once so the constant order okay so uh, the overall time complexity recurrence relation we get as what as order of 1 when p equals q and order of n plus p of i minus p plus p of q minus i plus order of 1. So we get the recurrence relation like this. So we further so solve the recurrence relation. Okay. We got as tn equals n plus t i minus p plus t of q minus i. So we can get as two cases that is best case best three cases we can say as best worst and average case which we can say like this only the best or the average case becomes one when the when the main list uh, is divided into two equal sub list and this further divided into two equal sub list ok like this structure we will get then it will be known as the best case of the quick sort algorithm and in that case, we will get the recurrence relation as p is n plus p of n by 2 plus t of n by 2. That will be equal to the n plus 2 t n by 2. After solving using the master's theorem, we will get the time complexity as order of n log n. Okay. So, in the worst case, we can say that we will get the list like one on the un uh, one side and other rest n minus one on the other side okay like this we will get so uh, all on one side and they will go on the other side so this will happen in the case when there is already sorted or reverse sorted list okay so if it is the already sorted list then what is the need of sorting it Okay, so uh, uh, whatever it may be, like this, calculate the time complexity by using the recurrence relation. Recurrence relation would be like this: t of n plus t of n minus one plus t of zero. T 
of 1 we can say 2 n plus t n minus 1 on solving this by using the substitution method we will get the time complexity is order of n square ok so we will, we will uh, get the uh, 3 s n n like this by s t ok so we will get as the best case of the um, quick sort will get the time complexity as order of n log n while the worst case will get as n square order of n square so it is uh, the algorithm is used only when their real sorting is needed ok we can say that the real uh, need of sorting is there then only quick sort is used thank you